I'm Shan Smith with Good Sense Automation. Good Sense Automation is a systems integrator. We're located in Greenville, South Carolina. Our specialties are robotics, vision, PLCs. We do other things. We do conveyors. But hey, we're going to do a quick tutorial on Ohm's Law. This tutorial is strictly from a resistive perspective. We're not going to talk conductance. We're not going to talk reactance. And remember, remember kids. Electricity will kill you. So keep in mind, safety first always. Low voltage and high voltage. If you always practice safety, you're always safe. Let's get into this lesson. All right, so the outline is we're gonna we will introduce Ohm's law. We're gonna talk voltage, we're gonna talk current, resistance, application, and we're done. You have your basic outline your basic understanding of Ohm's law at that point. So Ohm's law, Ohm's law is the fundamental principle in electrical engineering that describes the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance in an electrical circuit. It states that current passing through a conductor between two points is directly proportional to voltage across two points and inversely proportional to resistance. The voltage from 24 volts to 48 volts, I will double my current flow from one amp to two amps. It's a directly proportional relationship. In the same, if I decrease my voltage from 24 volts to 12 volts, I would decrease my current flow from one amp to 0.5 amps. It's a directly proportional relationship between voltage and current. If I increase my voltage, I increase my current by the same amount. Now, if I look at resistance in my circuit, resistance and current are inversely proportional. If I increase resistance, I decrease my current flow. It's inversely proportional. So if I had a 10 ohm resistor and one amp of current flow, if I increase my resistance from 10 ohms to 20 ohms, at that point, I would decrease my current flow from one amp to 0.5 amps. It's an inversely proportional relationship. Now, if I decrease my resistance, I increase my current. So we have a 10 amp resistor one, sorry, <laughs> we have a 10 ohm resistor, one amp of current flow. If I decrease my resistance from 10 ohms to 5 ohms, I will double my current from 1 amp to 2 amps. It's an inversely proportional relationship. So current and voltage, directly proportional. Current and resistance are inversely proportional in an electrical circuit. The voltage. Voltage in an electrical circuit is known as potential difference. Electrical pressure, voltage pushes electrons through a conductor so that the electrons can pass through a load and do work. That means it's going to power a light, power my computer, power your cell phone, power your game, power all the devices you love, power your Tesla if you have one. And there's two types of voltage, two types of voltage, two types of voltage. Two types of voltage, AC and DC. DC voltage provides a direct current. Current, po current flows in one direction through the circuit, whereas AC voltage provides an alternating current. In the US, that alternating current is at 60 hertz or changes at 60 cycles per second. So when we talk about potential difference, we have to look at there being a difference in electrical pressure between two points. So for example, if I have a digital multimeter, I set that digital multimeter for DC voltage. If I take both terminals, the positive and the negative, and I put both of those on a positive terminal of a battery, I'm going to see basically zero volts because at that point, at that particular point, electrically, 
there's no difference in potential. So when we look at voltage, it's a difference in between, potential between two points. So we have to understand that in order to calculate voltage. We have to understand that in order to um, even test and measure. We have to know what we're looking for before we even try and measure voltage in a system. All right, so that's voltage. So let's talk current flow. Current is the flow of electrons. And we look at current flow, there's two theories. There's conventional current flow. Conventional current flow is based on looking at electrons as flowing from positive to negative in an electrical circuit. And then there's an electron flow theory when we look at electrical current as flowing from negative to positive in an electrical circuit. Conventional flow, electron flow, this is a diode. <laughs> and a diode only allows for current to flow in one direction. Also, as we talk about current, current flow is the dangerous part of an electrical circuit. Current flow is when we have current flowing, current will also current will always take the path of least resistance, which means if the current does not have to go through a load, it's going to choose to go through my body. Remember, kids, electricity will kill you. So we have to understand current from a point that current flow will, will current flow will always take the path of least resistance. So we have to always be careful. And we talk current, it doesn't mean a lot. 50 to 150 milliamps, extreme pain, respiratory arrest, severe, severe muscle reactions, and then death is possible. Remember, kids. And then if we look at one amp and above, it can cause your heart to cease. So just one current is measured in amps. It's, it is the rate at which electrical charge flows through a circuit. It's the flow of electrons through a wire or conductor to power devices. Higher voltage results in higher current. The lower voltage results in lower current. Resistance in electrical circuits. These are symbols for resistance. Resistance is measured in ohms. This is a 1,000 ohm, 1K. Notice it's a lowercase k. This is a 47,000 ohm resistor. Also, as we talk about current, calculate the behavior of a circuit based on its components. By using the equation, current equals voltage divided by resi resistance, engineers can determine the amount of current that will flow through a circuit at any given voltage. So let's take a look at it. Also, when we talk about circuit types, there are two types of electrical circuit. There is a series circuit where there's only one path for current to flow. There's a parallel circuit where there's two or more paths for electrical current to flow. In a series circuit, if we see here, we have a 48 volt supply. I have 12 ohms of resistance. 14 ohms of resistance and 13 ohms of resistance. We can add these resistance values. We can add these resistance val values algebraically, where 12 plus 14 plus 13 gives me a total resistance of 39 ohms. So we reduce the size of the circuit. We look at the three series circuits as one resistance total. So again, I can take voltage divided by resistance. And I know for a fact that approximately 1.23 amps of current will flow through this circuit. This is Ohm's law in a series circuit. In the next example, we have Ohm's law in a parallel circuit. I have 160 volts four amps of current flow, and 40 ohms of resistance. Now, if I take a look at this, so as I take a look at the circuit, one thing that may seem weird is that I have 160 ohms, 80 ohms, and then I have another 160 ohm resistance. resistance. However, in a parallel circuit, every time we add a branch, resistance goes down, and there's another path for current to flow. So the way we calculate resistance in a parallel circuit is different 
I'm not going to do it in this lesson. However, know that every time I have resistance in parallel, resistance goes down and current goes up in a parallel circuit. So parallel circuits are a little more complex, but we're not going to do the calculation here. So we can see that in a parallel circuit, current takes the path of least resistance. So in my one amp, in my 160 ohm branch, I have one amp of current flow. When I cut that value in half in my 80 ohm branch, I have two amps of current flow. If I have a 40 ohm branch, that would be the greatest current flow in my circuit. Current always takes the path of least resistance. If you have questions about Ohm's law, please reach out. If you have questions about voltage, current, Ohm's law, please reach out. Have a great, have a great day. Shane Smith, Good Sense Automation.